up, but it looks like the house it's itself has caught area. fire. Certainly, uh, the fence line is fully involved. Yeah, there's there is smoke coming now from that house. Let's go up to uh, Dave Allen in Live Copter Three. We can see fire crews there uh, trying to do structure protection, but Dave, that house has now caught fire. The house has the house has not yet, Edie. That's the fence that's burning there, and it is burning underneath the tree here, so it's kind of hard to tell. So let me get live copter around. Um, I'm on the north side of this house, so you can see that's that's just that fence right now, and there are people that are kind of back there with their garden hoses and all. Um, some of that fence just collapsing as you witness it on your screen there. But back to the left, there was a lot of fuel, and this fire just absolutely took off. And as you can see, it is now kind of threatening that house that's just at the bottom left corner of your screen and there's uh, other houses that are along the eastern side of this field so fire apparatus are here right now I have not seen any firefighting helicopters here yet but this is the kind of fire that they'll generally bring one out to if they really need it badly enough but this is this has uh, just burned quite a bit of this area here and it and it just does look like it's threatening that neighborhood to your left and of course, the important stuff uh, for the firefighters is to keep those flames out of those trees so that it just doesn't uh, crest and get on the roofs of some of those homes there. Okay, and you know, Absolutely. Dave, I'm, I'm noticing that, that there is good defensible space on, on some sides of this, and they've got water, it looks like, right on the side of the house. Great to, to know that the house wasn't involved because it looked like the smoke was coming uh, out of the windows, but you're right, that was coming from the, from the uh, fence line there. But if you get a wider shot, there is, it's just dirt that, that is around that grassy field, which is great defensible space for that neighborhood. Good defensible space, but everywhere that you see that blackened area right there, that was very, very thick grass. It burned very intensely and very hot for quite some time. So the fire apparatus, as we say, it's here now. They're going to get ahead of this in short order, but it's still going to burn here for a little bit, and it still is threatening some residences. Dave, how are the winds uh, impacting, uh, impacting this blaze from what you're seeing, this grass fire? Well, I'm experiencing some pretty high winds up here at altitude. I'm flying at about 1,200 feet above all of this. And as I turn into the wind, my airspeed indicator just, just pops right up to about 40 miles an hour from about, I uh, usually cruise about 10, uh, 10 miles an hour as we orbit here. So I'm, I'm getting a good, you know, good 20, 30 mile an hour winds as we go here. Now, I'm going to have, I'm going to actually have Dommy pull out and tilt up and we're going to take a look at our other fire that we started on this evening. It's really putting out the smoke up there at the recycling plant, and it's, it's just straight up on the horizon from there and there. So that's the recycling plant smoke, so you can see how close these two are together, which is definitely going to be a challenge for fire departments as they try to get on both of these. Yeah, you said about four miles uh, separating those two. We want to remind our viewers that normally we would be into NBC Nightly News right now because because of the immediate threat to public safety and property with the fire burning near Stutz Court. We are staying with this coverage uh, just so that you know people who are directly impacted can see from our aerial view exactly what's going on as crews are fighting this blaze. Uh, we will join NBC Nightly News in just a couple of minutes here. We just want to make sure uh, that firefighters uh, are able to contain this and keep it away. There are obviously neighborhoods all around this fire. And going back to going back to Dave, can we check in on the house that was most immediately threatened one more time again? Right, it was that house that's there you go, is that house right there and we a minute ago saw a firefighter putting water on the north side of that structure. So uh, there's a now we're getting two more apparatus have just showed up. The field tanker has just shown up. So they're they're gonna get ahead of this in there. Let me get live copped around here to the north side again and we'll see how they're doing on that house that we're all concerned about here. Okay, thank you, Dave. Let's check in with Mark Finan and, and Mark, you heard Dave talk about those winds uh, at his high altitude. Uh, how do you think it's impacting uh, what's going on there right now? Well, it's certainly enough to give this fire a push. They're out of the uh, west and southwest around 15 to 20 miles an hour. That's a, a map showing uh, where that is. So it's uh, west of Elk Grove, Florin Road, and south of Carlisle uh, in that uh, vacant field that you see right there. So it's a vacant field of a few acres that is uh, burning, and it's uh, you know, close to these homes, as you can see. But yes, yeah, certainly 
certainly enough to uh, to give that fire forward momentum that you can clearly see with the uh, with the direction that the smoke is going and the smoke is uh, is being pushed along and it uh, certainly catching more grass on fire more fuel right there but as we've been saying it does look as though uh, the whoever owns this property did take the time to at least cut a perimeter around it so while the fire is burning the grass as soon as it gets to that edge it stops and while that home on the edge does look as though it's kind of scary uh, it just looks like right now it's getting a lot of smoke and not a lot of flame. Okay, yes, yeah, certainly what we've seen develop in the last couple of minutes is a better picture there for those homeowners. So we will